Hi, welcome to another Sporting Communities podcast. Sporting Communities are a community interest company. We are an ethical, non-for-profit organisation which services range from sports coaching, youth work, mentors and family support. We are a training academy delivering a range of qualifications and we also have art and play services. Again, today we're going to be focusing on the mental health side of lockdown. Um, basically, we're going to look into how lockdown is currently working for all of us, what we think of the actual wording around lockdown, whether that needs to be updated now that more things are reopening back up, how the vulnerable are reintegrating back into society um, and what that looks like for them, um, and then just a general chat really around the situation and how we're all finding it. Um, so we'll just start with quick introductions. Um, I'm James again. Uh, I'm again joined by Ed, Mim and Sam. So if I could come to you all, um, how you've been doing this week and just a quick chat around yourself. Ed, starting with you. Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to another podcast. My name's Ed, like James said. I'm the Derbyshire Development Officer for Sporting Communities. Uh, this, be this week's been really well uh, good for me. I've actually been out and um, played a bit of golf um, just by myself just to get out and uh, the w while the weather's been nice and it's been good just to get a bit of exercise in different a different environment around the the golf course um so yeah in terms of that it's been good um still working from home though and just uh trying to stay in as much as possible being careful still and really apart from that just going out to do some shopping so yeah that's me very good i suppose at least golfing by yourself you know you won't lose so <laughs> that's that's one positive to take from that one yeah <laughs> mim coming to you uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, this week I've not um, done anything differently only because I've got a uni assignment due. Um, but I think for me, just hearing that we can sort of have these sort of places open and it's a bit of a choice thing now. So that now that I know that I can, it, I feel better about it because it's like that choice is is there for me to make. It's not sort of been taken away from me anymore. Um, but as I said last week, I won't be going sort of shopping and stuff unless I absolutely have to. I'm not going to go crazy. And um, personally, I'm just not ready for that yet. And that's OK. I mean, we're all coping with it differently. Yeah, definitely. Couldn't agree more with that, Mim. And coming to you, Stan. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah, this week's been really good for me. Um, obviously, still uh, working and children attending school um got my eldest son home um after a long period of them being away um due to health conditions um so obviously 16 weeks without him at home um we were certainly happy to have him back um so yeah just trying to get back into a routine and um trying to get him back into the rhythm of being back at home um is a bit overwhelmed with it all so so yeah but a positive on my end yeah great you must be so happy to have him back Oh, yeah, definitely. I cried. <laughs> oh, bless you. Bless you. I'm sure there's quite a few families going through the same kind of things at the minute. So, yeah, it's, it is good to sort of hear the positives and stuff like that at the top coming from sort of the moment that's happening now. Yeah, no, it was great. Thank you. No, it was really good. He, obviously, we surprised him as well, so he didn't even know he was coming home. Um, he popped on the front um, and then into the garden, social distancing and thought that he was um, just coming to visit, um, obviously social distancing away from us. And then obviously we surprised him to say that he could come home and he didn't believe me. <laughs> oh, bless. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so. I may have a few more questions on that later then, Sam. So I think we'll revisit that in a little while. Um, first thing I wanted to start us with, um, I just wanted to kind of ask your guys' opinion on the word lockdown. Uh, do we think the current stages of lockdown are working? Are people actually adhering to them? Um, and do we think that the word lockdown is the word we should now be using? Or should there be a new word for this new stage? I think lockdown to me means that you can't leave your house. Um, I know I'm back at work. I know a lot of people now are traveling back to work and they're going out more often. Shops are now open. So people are going out and doing a lot more bits and bobs that they weren't allowed to do before. To me, when you weren't allowed to do any of that, that was locked down. So I don't know what to call this bit, but to me, when we're sort of talking about the fact we're now over 100 days of lockdown, it just feels a little bit weird. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's just my opinion. So I thought I'd see what you guys think. So, yeah, I personally think that the advice we've been given is already so 
unclear I'd say so I think having the word lockdown still is really blurring those lines on what we are and aren't allowed to do what we should and shouldn't be doing so I think we do need to update that word just to make it clearer for everyone to like understand and sort of where we're at in this process because also if we keep the word lockdown I think it's it's not showing the progression of where we've come so yeah sort of seeing that no actually we have come out of lockdown and we're going to a different stage now it will really sort of solidify for everyone the progress that we've made and it will be a lot more positive yeah I think even if it was called like partial lockdown or some, something like that, just to try and, like you say, sort of to differentiate between the stages that we've had and the stage that we're now going into. I, ju I just think something needs to be... I remember them talking about the sort of five numbered stages and there was the five, four, three, two, one, um, and where we were on that scale. I've not really heard them talk about it since, to be honest. So I don't really know where we are with that. I, they're still talking about lockdown, but yet everything's reopening. So to me, it just feels weird. Yeah, I agree. I think um, they just come back to things as and when they please, when when it seems convenient to them. And it's not about that. It's about keeping the, public, the general public in the loop about what's happening and going on. And I just think in terms of like the word lockdown and what, what's happening, like Mims just said, it doesn't relate to the current situation at all. And I know you mentioned about can we be trusted with, you know, things opening. I just think that whilst everyone's been in pretty much stuck in their homes for three months you know as soon as pubs restaurants um open people you know they're all fully booked they're they're predicting that it's going to be as as busy as new year's eve you know it, it is going to be rammed especially around derby and nottingham when you know the football because they're playing each other on the saturday that but not just because of that all around the country bars and um, uh, uh, pubs are going to be packed full fully booked straight away so as soon as you, they open stuff so the cinemas as soon as cinemas open they're going to get booked out as soon as uh, sports facilities are open they're all going to get booked out and people aren't just going to sit inside um you know and at the minute i don't think there's enough facilities and enough things for people to do to warrant one thing not getting booked out and, and others are so um it's not, I don't think it's maybe a case of can we be trusted? I just think that people have been locked up for three months and as soon as things are going to open, um, people are going to go out and do them things like the sh shopping and, um, yeah, like I say, go, go into restaurants uh, or, or to the pub for a drink just to socialise and get out a bit more. Um, so it's a difficult one because, because everyone's being allowed to go out, yet only a quarter of, you know, um, like places to go are opening. There's not enough places yeah. open to 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 warrant everyone being able to go. So it's going to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I just it just sort of confuses me a little bit that we're all being told we should still be staying at home as much as we can. Um, but yeah, if everything's open, then like you say, people are going to want to go out to go to it because of the fact that if it's open, well, it must be open for a reason, which means I can go to it. Yeah, it just it just all seems a bit confusing to me. I know I was reading an article online about the fact that sort of indoor um, sporting facilities and stuff like that with regards to such as badminton bits. I know you're a keen badminton player yourself. I know at the minute they're still not allowed to open, but yet you can go to the pub and have a pint. Yeah. That to me seems a little bit backwards. I don't, I don't quite get the, the sort of rationale behind that. Personally, um, I'm sure there's logic behind it, and I'm sure there's science behind it. But to me, it seems much more safe to go and me stand one side of a net and you stand the other and play a game of badminton than yeah. it does to go and sit on a table and have a pint. But yeah. There's been a lot of disputes about that, hasn't there? And it's whether, you know, are they, are they look, looking more at the financial. Um, side of it than the health benefits you know there's no doubt that going and playing some sport and being physically active is better than maybe standing or sitting in a pub or restaurant and eating food so you've got to question it so you, you're always going to get someone disagreeing with the rule but like you just said it just doesn't seem to make sense in terms of a health um, as, as a health reason the way they've gone about it at all yeah do we think we're getting updates often enough about the stuff that's opening up or does it seem to sort of just spring on us 
and then before you know it that's happening and you're just like wow I've got to deal with it I think personally um that I think that the government guidelines and everything that obviously has been put in place I think that they've tried to do the very best obviously for everybody I do believe that it's a very difficult situation and no one ever thought in your lifetime that you'd have anything like this go on um so i think it's been a very confusing frustrating um uh, emotional every emotion you can think of i think we've all kind of gone through them stages probably um as a country as as the world um and yes i understand with all the comments that you've just said um i, I agree with a lot of them um i think obviously with pubs and stuff opening i think that like you say with the safe side of it um i agree with ed that everyone has been locked up for a long period of time so they are going to want to venture out um but then at the same time um i think like you say a lot of it is confusing but i think with the safe side i think if you keep with the social distancing and it's like with bars and stuff i know that is am i right in saying that you're not allowed to stand at the bar you have to sit down and i think it also has to be same household doesn't it you can't go meet your friends at the pub um so in that sense i think that they are still keeping a lot of restrictions in place so you can't stand up at the bar you're not allowed around the bar you have to make your order from the table um obviously you have to pre-book um the tables are set so they're all social distanced apart um so I think for people's sanity, I think it's a great thing that we are allowed to maybe venture out. I personally probably won't, um, just because I find it very difficult as well with young children to stop them from touching things and going near people. I, I, it's, it's a very difficult situation because I'm constantly telling them to stay back and stay with me and, and don't touch and whatever. Um, but I think for people's sanity, I do think it's a great thing. Um, and as well, safety wise, they, like you say, it's the same household and, and you're only allowed within restrictions. Um, I do think that it'll be difficult with football, but I did hear a rumour that a lot of pubs aren't going to be showing football because of that reason. Um, so yeah, that, that's my opinion on some of it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, do, I just think as long as everyone's responsible, you know, it only takes one person to ruin that within the, a, a whole pub or restaurant. So everyone, it's everyone's responsibility to stick to them rules. And as long as they do so, I think it's going to be, yeah, a, a good thing that, that something is back open for people to go out and, uh, and do. I think um, the test and trace is really good as well, Dave. Um, obviously, I've seen some... Um, I've seen parts of it with the test and trace with people that I know. So um, I've seen the repercussions of how it works. And obviously with one person um, having signs and symptoms and they're tested and they're also households is tested. And then obviously they allow people around them to know. Um, so if they've been to work that day with say six, seven people, then they all, um, obviously if, if it comes back positive, then they all leave and they all get tested. And so I think the test and traces had actually a really, well, my personal opinion, I think it's a really positive thing. Um, so obviously for families and friends and work colleagues and so forth to know whether some with someone having signs and symptoms to whether they know that they're positive or not and then obviously the test then obviously carry on with the next people that they're around so these safety bubbles and work bubbles and school bubbles or whatever um they're all being tested and everyone's aware of if someone's had it or got signs and symptoms with it um so I, I think personally that's a really good thing as well and it's just having trust in people that they're open enough to say actually I'm not feeling great I may have signs and symptoms I'm going to go and get a test great stuff yeah I definitely agree with that Sam um so coming back to you um I just wanted to really ask with regards to your son coming back home how has he found it um has he found the process hard um, I know we were going to speak about vulnerable people and how they're reintegrating. So I think this really covers into that. Um, and basically, how has he found moving back home? Is it something that he struggled with? Is it something he's been really excited with? Um, so, yeah, just your experience from that, really. Um, yeah, so he's really excited to be home, um, obviously. I think he's a little bit overwhelmed. He's got two younger brothers um, that are constantly... Uh, shout in his name um, and won't leave him alone um, and yeah he is really excited to be home but then at the same time 
it doesn't cope very well with change and a, a lot of children that are in routine and obviously live at home with parents and so on and they've got routine with everything um I think change is a big thing for any child but then at the same time they are very resilient and do cope I suppose a lot better than adults in certain situations um so him moving away with another family um he then got into their routine and obviously the way that they run a household and how they are um he got used to that and so moving back home um as much as he is excited and he's happy to be home um he is constantly on the phone um with the obviously the other family um he wants to ring them all the time um he's asked me twice if we can go down and see them um obviously social distancing um so yeah he's certainly missing them um and um i feel that because he's gone from being in an isolated household um he's never been to a shop he's literally done exercising whether it be going on a bike ride or just do exercise in the garden um so for them to go so obviously he came home friday and then he started school on the tuesday um it was a big shock to his system um being obviously within close proximities to other children um so yeah i think he, he has struggled at times to be honest he, he didn't like going back to school at first because he isn't with children that he knows or he's not with his friends he's in a different bubble to everybody else he's even in a different bubble to his own brothers uh they're together and he's separate so um i think everything's really just overwhelmed him um and he's still very nervous so that like, i took him to the shop the other day um for the first time we we washed hands we sanitized but he still got really nervous to even be around anybody and when someone was walking down the aisle he kind of like jumped out the way um so yeah um i think like i say it's just really overwhelming for him but i've just got to give him time um, and just support him and make sure that i'm talking regular to him just making sure he's okay yeah i, I was going to ask really just with regards to that i mean it's it's it sounds like obviously he struggled with a few things, but it's great that he's got your support with it because it must also be hard for you because you've not had your son there for 16 weeks and then suddenly have your son back, but your son now wants to contact the family the way he's been staying. Obviously, you want him to come back and want to be at home, um, but that's not necessarily going to always be the case because he's now going to miss where he's been. So has that been yeah. hard for you? Yeah, actually, now you say that, I actually spoke about this for the first time yesterday. Um, and I said, um, as much as, oh God, I'm, I'm over the moon, he's my son. Um, and I've never been away from him. Um, I think the most I've ever been away is for a night. So I've seen him every day of his life. And then not to be with him for nearly 16 weeks was a long time. Um, so automatically I want him to come home and just fall back into where he was before with the routine and and everything that we did as a family um so yeah it is really difficult as a mother to know that um not that he's formed these bonds because they had bonds anyway um the family that he stayed with are really close friends and, and godparents of, of obviously my other child so um, we were really close anyway so there was already bonds there friendships and and obviously a lot of love there but um to know that he's walking in straight from school and I'm trying to say to him like how have you been at school what have you been doing and having a normal conversation and straight away he runs upstairs he's like I'll talk to you in a minute mum um I've got to ring um obviously he wants to ring his friend because he was living with his friend actually um so my friends has a son and they're the same age um so he wants to ring him and he wants to speak to obviously the other family and I think the other day he even laughed and he went I've been on the phone for 47 minutes <laughs> um so so yeah and then as soon as he comes off the phone he's then saying mum will you take me around and so yeah he's he's obviously he's missing them like I suppose how in a sense he was missing us when he first left um yeah. and he just wants to be with them um if he's not here then he wants to uh, uh, when he's at home sorry he wants to go and see them he wants to be with them for half an hour or an hour just to go and see them and obviously at the moment it's it's a little bit more difficult with social distancing especially with the weather if you stood on the front um but yeah he's, he's obviously communicating with them a lot still and it is hard because like you say you want him to come home and and 
I suppose I just like I say I just want him to fall back into what it was like before but I've got to remember that this was it's a big change for him um, yeah. and it's something that's going to sit with him for the rest of his life that he spent all this time with this other family and um, but then on the flip side it's lovely it's um, there's bonds and love more so now that he'll never ever forget and it's a memory that he certainly will never forget of love and fun and support that this other family gave him throughout them nearly 16 weeks that he was there I couldn't have asked for a better family to take him in yeah it, I have to say it, it sounds like you're doing amazing with it and I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there who are going through similar things and can take a lot from what you're talking about now so yeah I, from commendable from me I think I think you're doing an amazing job so yeah just keep it up and I'm, I'm sure he'll get back into his routine so but yeah, hopefully them you. ones that he's made will, they'll stay forever so yeah oh yeah definitely great stuff so as well as that obviously we've got sort of elderly and people who've been told to shield and everything like that now integrating back into society they're now being told that they can leave the house and they can go and do things um how do we think that they'll deal with that has anyone got any personal experience of people who've been told to shield who've now gone out um and just how do we think that they're going to be able to go out and deal with that after being locked locked away in their houses for the best part of three months really yeah, I still think they're going to be quite uncertain and quite anxious about going back out, to be honest. I think that when I go shopping and you see some people wearing masks, gloves, some people just wearing, like, nothing. Um, so, again, I think it's down to people's responsibility to each other to make each other feel comfortable. You know, it's not just ourselves that we've got to be thinking about. It's other people. So just because we think, we're, we think it's okay not to wear a mask you might be making someone else feel quite anxious when they see you without one. You know, so I, I think there's a lot to take into consideration. I think the uncertainty is, is the main thing and the mixed kind of mixed views and responses from even, even when you see inter interviews on the news, you see people who seem to be standing right next to each other. And these are, these are presenters on, on the news. You think, well, if they're not doing it and you know, they're live on TV for everyone to see. Um, then what what example does that give out to other people? So I, I think it's very mixed, and I don't think um, if if you if you were high risk or vulnerable, I wouldn't I wouldn't be very confident in going going out to be honest. Yeah, I know my my nan actually. Um, she's she's not technically in like the high risk group or anything like that, but because of her age she decided that she was just going to completely self-isolate. So she's literally not left her house since the end of March, um, other than to go into her garden. And I spoke to her on the phone the other day and she was talking about potentially going down to the shop. And as soon as she started talking about it, I could almost feel her anxiety over the phone call. Um, and so we kind of spoke about how she could help deal with that and stuff like that. And I said, well, maybe for now, don't go to a shop. You could actually walk to the shop and then walk home without going in just so that you can see what it looks like you can see if it looks busy and if you get there and you think do you know what actually I want to go in then she can but if she gets there and she thinks well do you know what it looks a little bit busy today she can walk back and at least she's been out of the house and done something different to her normal daily routine just to try and break it up a bit and get her out of the house um, so I mean hopefully that'll help her but I'm sure there's a lot of people um, still worried about the same kind of things. I mean, it, it links back to Sam and your son and sort of after about three weeks, you kind of get used to the new norm. And so people have got used to now not leaving the house. So suddenly thinking about going back out and going to a supermarket and like you see, say, Ed, people kind of walking around, some have got masks and gloves, some haven't got anything. And to be able to deal with all of that, I think, I think it's a lot to take in for these people. I really do. I think it's a situation that you're really going to struggle to explain to people as well, especially to children, um, maybe people that suffer with mental health or um, the elderly. You're trying to explain to people or reinforce rules and regulations saying that you can't do this and you can't do that, which is I completely understand. And like I said, I'm not going, I'm, I'm not going to 
slander what's been put in place because I do think that they've done like the government have done a really good job um trying to keep us all safe um but then at the same time it, it's just a really difficult situation because if you are trying to enforce these guidelines and rules and and regulations and then you are like telling people like family members like children you can't go home or um elderly people can't go out or shielding people can't go and see their loved ones that they probably haven't seen for 14 15 weeks but then obviously you are then seeing on tv um a show round of a pub and they're all sat around the bar together um or you are watching the football and yes they're keeping their distance but then like you say within the game they're not um people are wearing masks and in interviews some are wearing masks some aren't um so i just think it's a really difficult situation because like you say everyone's going to have a different opinion um in this situation but it's just hard to reinforce things with people that quite may not understand it quite as fully as others um because they're seeing one thing on the tv and with people that they have to listen from um that are reinforcing these rules but then they're also um seeing the opposite of what's being reinforced on tv if that makes sense or with people around them and i don't know it's just a difficult situation <laughs> yeah i know i know throughout this series of podcasts i know you mim have always said that you'll only do what you feel comfortable with yourself. So yeah, no, matter what, no matter what the guidance comes out and stuff like that, if you don't feel comfortable going out and doing that right now, you'll wait until you feel comfortable. And I think that is so true now, and sort of more now than it ever has been. Because actually, if all of these places are opening up, people might feel, if you'd be getting invited somewhere, let's say a family member says, you know what, it'd be really nice for us to all go here and meet up here. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, and you feel that you're putting yourself or others at risk, it's fine to say, do you know what, I'm not ready for that step yet. So linking on to that then, Mim, um, I know we discussed earlier about our tip of the week that we're giving out as a group. So we're coming to you now for that tip, which links to what we were just talking about. Great. Thanks, James. So our top tip this week is that although lockdown is sort of loosening off now, that during this time we all need to be and have been here for each other. So it's about sort of maintaining that. Um, and remember that we need to carry on supporting each other and remembering that everyone's dealing with this differently and everyone's got their own personal struggles going on. Yeah, definitely. Come to agree more with that. Right, so to finish off, we are going to do our jokes of the week again. So, yeah, we'll all do a joke each again this week. We'll see if any of us can actually get a laugh. I know I normally don't, so... I've been trying to find a good one this week for you, but I deem it good, but you guys probably won't. So I'm happy to start off. Um, why do seagulls fly over the sea? I don't know. Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I'm quite happy with that. I got a laugh. Yeah, that's wow. really good. <laughs> right, see if you can beat that then, Ed. Okay, we're ready. <clears throat> Want to hear a joke about construction? Mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, was, that took all week to find that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Right, Sam, coming to you. Okay, so how do you close an, an envelope underwater? I don't uh, know. With a seal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm laughing at my own joke. <laughs> I can't decide if these are getting better or worse, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> right, Mim, let's finish on a high. All right, well, I was just wondering if you heard the uh, cheesy weather forecast. There's going to be a light breeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with that, I've got a laugh. <laughs> I just laugh for everyone's. <laughs> I love a good joke. Another cheese-themed joke as well. So yeah, That's you it. can't I'm, beat that. I'm can following you? suit. That's it, definitely. <laughs> it was very good, man. I liked it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there we go. Always, always good to finish on a positive note. So thank you for that, guys. Um, thank you again for listening, everyone. Hope you have a good week. Stay safe, and we'll speak to you again soon. See you guys. Bye. Bye.